With references aplenty, Far Cry 5 has been great for Easter egg hunters. From the wild and wacky to some inside jokes from the devs, we're going to show you our favorite Easter eggs hidden in Far Cry 5. Before we start, I'm Greg with the leaderboard. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. First, we need to warn you that there may be some spoilerific Easter eggs in this video. You have been warned. <laughs> If you're looking to add a bit of personalized flair to your ride, look no further than the numerous garages within Hope County. While you can trick your ride out with a new paint job, one of the other features you can add are bobbleheads. One such bobblehead bears a likeness to Far Cry 3's voracious villain, Voss Montenegro. In bobblehead form, he's sporting a hula skirt and a ukulele. Also within the Ubisoft Club rewards are a Pagan Min bobblehead, looking quite dapper in his signature pink suit, and a rabbit. All three are ready to adorn your dashboard and keep you company on those lengthy drives through the mountains of Montana. The words from one of Joseph Seed's sanctimonious siblings may be buried under a sheet of sickeningly sweet innocence, but when you first begin tearing down Faith's region, you soon learn of her darker past. One telling sign of her origins is tattooed on her left arm, where you can see the chemical formula for cocaine. Prepare to get supernatural. Crop circles and cattle tend to go hand in hand when you start talking about alien abductions. In the side missions with Larry Parker, you encounter many references to the third kind, which ends with unlocking the otherworldly Magnopulsar. However, the Easter egg here is tied to all of the hints that Larry Parker might just be our main protagonist for the upcoming Far Cry 5 DLC, Lost on Mars. Inside Larry Parker's home, there are posters of a Martian surface with buildings that look like the same style as the ones found in the Lost on Mars DLC trailer. These posters do show up all over Hope County, as well as the Lost on Mars comic book, but there are a couple of other things that really tie it all together. The phone inside Larry's home has a voicemail. Let's take a listen. Let me start off by saying that this isn't something we normally do, but given the bizarre nature and frequency of your phone calls and emails, I am personally reaching out to ask you to stop fishing for updates on the current Mars situation. Since you made us aware of the microwave anomalies, we've allocated enough resources to monitor the situation. Mars is stable and not on the verge of exploding. If this changes, I promise I will contact you. Thank you and goodbye. The message is from Daniel McCoy from NASA, most likely returning Larry's numerous requests. And what about that final piece of the puzzle? We're getting to that. Don't get your tractor beam in a knot. At the final activation of Larry's machine, if you also run into the surrounding green energy, you'll be given a glimpse of a multi-legged creature. But if you compare this with the aliens featured in the Lost on Mars DLC trailer, now I'm not going to call this a fact yet, but I don't think this is the last we'll see of Larry Parker. On a lighter note, let's head back to the start of the game to Dutch's Island. On the island, you will find a lookout post. Head on up to the living area and play the message on the phone. The message is for Henry, about a fire sign and a plume of smoke. For those of you that have not played Firewatch, Henry is the main protagonist. Most of the game's dialogue happens via radio and phone calls between you and a woman in another lookout tower further down the mountain range. Do you like clowns? Me neither. But that doesn't stop Ubisoft from really capturing their market. In a couple spots in Hope County, you can find a single red balloon ominously minding its own business. Yeah, I'm not buying that either. The first of these balloons is just east of the iconic crop circles sitting at the end of a culvert. Floating down here is prohibited. Definitely creepy enough to put a smile on any nearby demented demon clown's face. The second balloon is located between John and Faith's region on the Henbane River, in O'Hara's haunted house. You're gonna go through the haunted house to get upstairs to the prepper's stash. The first thing you'll notice is the second menacing red balloon. It's not enough just to see a scary lone balloon though, there's also a voicemail waiting on the phone. Alright, that's it. I'm leaving. If you head into the shop, Far Cry 5 offers some great ways to make your character your own. There are a wide range of outfits, from Hunter's Camo to some more casual looks. But check out the outfits at the bottom of the list. The first is an outfit called Omega, a direct tie-in to Ubisoft's homage to the over-the-top 80s action movies, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Now you too can be a mindless murdering machine. Oh, wait. 
If sporting a loincloth and bone tooth necklace feels comfortable to you, then you might just be the player that plays Rengar in League of Legends every single game. Or maybe you just like the feeling of the brisk breeze of Montana. Either way, it's a great look for your next Oros outing. The last one we want to show off is the Rainbow Six Siege Armor Pack. While Castle may not be the most used operator, it looks like his armor kit can still get some use in the hills of Hope County. While this is a mission for all to enjoy, it really goes out of its way to tie the Far Cry Ubiverse together even more. Here in the mountains of Montana, Hollywood's own fictitious, detestable director, Guy Marvel, has been slapping together the next movie in his lineup, Blood Dragon 3. Completing this mission will grant you the Omega outfit from earlier and the admiration of Guy himself. Now getting ancient with it, located to the southwest of Ray Ray's Pumpkin Farm in Holland Valley is Frobisher's Cave. Head on in and while spelunking you will encounter some beautifully preserved cave paintings. Mobile Meth Lab not included, Aaron Tweak Kirby stands out as a slightly more whacked out version of Aaron Paul's Breaking Bad character, Jesse Pinkman. Referring to himself as a professional amateur chemist, he has you head on over to his lab, where he gives you a special drink that he refers to as FAST. Also, its name is Orange, so it seems like a direct play on the blue meth from the show. No trip to Montana is complete without some squatching. Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot, is kind of a big deal up here. If you head on up to Dansky's cabin in the Whitetail Mountains, you are immediately greeted with the ambient sounds of a man being mauled, followed by a loud roar. Following the trail to the north, you will see trails of blood, human bones, and animal carcasses. Scale the mountain using grappling hooks and your bare hands, and you'll find poor Dansky laying dead in front of a small cave. The cave is littered with bones and trash. We can only assume that Bigfoot has nearly escaped our grasp this time. Perhaps we'll get some Bigfoot DLC in the future, but for now that's just wishful thinking. Having been a reoccurring NPC since Far Cry 3, Herc is a bit of an oddity. When you first meet Herc Jr., he is praying to a monkey god, and when you talk, he gets deja vu. He thinks he may have seen you from somewhere before. Behind him are multiple boxes with the names of the places he's traveled. The Rook Island box is from Far Cry 3, Kyrat is from Far Cry 4, and somehow, there are multiple boxes from Oros of Far Cry Primal. Herc himself didn't appear in Far Cry Primal, it was his ancestor, Erky. I'm really curious as to how so many boxes of prehistoric memorabilia survived the Stone Age, but they are here. In one of the lengthier cutscenes in Faith's region, you start off in a field next to a peculiar creature. The creature is a jackalope, and is a very common part of North American folklore. It really is just a rabbit with deer-like antlers, but that hasn't stopped the jackalope from becoming an icon in the Northwest, where it's often found on postcards and even taxidermy. Wyoming even proposed it as the state's mythological creature. Tall tales about the jackalope include things like its ability to mimic the human voice, how it can only mate during lightning storms, and that hunters must wear stovepipes over their legs, otherwise they could be gored by the jackalope's mighty antlers. These creatures can be found in Hope County as alpha hares, and also in your nightmares. In the Old King's Hot Springs Hotel, there is a letter sitting on the front desk that describes some supernatural phenomenon. While it doesn't explicitly say Ghostbusters, it does ask, who are they going to call? And talks about ectoplasm. Inside the hotel, you can also hear a creepy chorus of typical horror movie tropes, like the noise from a water phone. And if you don't know what that is, go Google it. It will definitely send a shiver down your spine. At the beginning of the game, if you choose not to handcuff Joseph Seed, the sheriff will intervene after about four or five minutes, and you and the other marshal leave with him. If you don't take the father into custody, the game's events are not set in motion, and thus the game ends right then and there. This isn't the first time a Far Cry game has pulled this. There is a secret ending in Far Cry 4 that you can find in the first 15 minutes of the game. Sitting high atop a mountain in Holland Valley is a giant Hollywood-esque sign that simply says yes. The trek up is heavily guarded by wolverines and is a strenuous hike. But once you're right up and close to it, you will see just how big of a sign it takes to be seen across Hope County. Make your way around the back and you will see a particularly savage roasting of the father. If I were Joseph Seed, I would seriously be reconsidering my hostile cultist community. And for the last one, we have something simple but fun. If you purchase the lead pipe at any weapon store and then take a look through the available skins, you will find a rather fetching green pipe labeled Warp Zone. This definitely looks a lot like the warp pipes in Super Mario Bros. and is the one I'm using from now on. 
Do you have a favorite Easter egg or reference in Far Cry 5? Are you out hunting for your own discoveries? Let us know in the comments below. I'm your host, Greg, with The Leaderboard, your home for video game facts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad.